Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is August 7th, 2019, and what a great recovery for today. And Miss Vegas is going to give us the watch list. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Hope you had a great trading day. Again, trade what the market wants to bring you and let trades come to us. Uh, so definitely we're going to talk to you guys tonight about Roku, Lyft, Perry, Mitch, uh, I say Mitch, but it's actually Match, and Weight Watchers. And all these stocks have had earnings come out and very impressive. So let's get started. So today we're going to start with the earnings on Roku. You know, Roku's stock gained after earnings outlook was also beat. The stock was up 5% after hours. They top expectations. And, um, you know, the revenue climbed to 250.1 million from the 156.8 million. Analysts were forecasting $224 million. So the company did see um, 82.4 million in revenue come in from its player business and 167.7 million from the platform business, which includes the smart TVs as well as advertising opportunities. So Roku does expect revenue to be 250 to 255 million uh, for the full year models, uh, revenue of 1.075 billion to 1.09 billion. And the forecast earlier was around 1.03 billion, sorry, million to 1.05. Billion, I think it's billion. They mis mistyped that. Um, so good job on Roku. Uh, I was actually not thinking that they would do so so well, but hey, you know what? They surprised me. So Jim, let's hear about the Roku chart. Well, that's a lot of money if you add it up. That's for sure. Oh yeah. So here's the Roku chart. We're gonna pull up the yearly. You see how it popped after hours here? It did have a pretty good little sell off here last week and. This week kind of consolidated at a support level right around, oh, I do have a 97.91. And I know a lot of few people are trying to go into short this after hours. And I think they made a disconnect on that one. So let's pull up the year's chart. We do have a year high up here right around 113.44. This might turn some heads around now that we've seen this good five, six day sell off. I am using a TTM trend chart called TTM squeeze and my moving averages will be the the 200 the 34 and the 9 EMA so let's pull this up to the 20 day and have a look at the 20 day and you can see what I'm sell talking about we did almost have a double top up here but we did have a high up here at 113.44 with a resistance and we hit that resistance after hours here at 112.97 you see where I go off the base of the candles so it did pull back. I mean, right now we're at 109.13, but it did run up to that 112.97, which is pretty sweet. We're going to call a pivot point area in this 20-day chart right around 105.10. I don't want to see it go no lower than that, that 109.10, 105.10. And then we got three different supports. First one's going to be here at 107.98. Let's just call it a flat even 108. Oh, we've got another little place right here I'm going to go ahead and draw in at 10909. Yeah, you kind of see stuff you miss when you're looking at these charts. So we're going to pull this up. We're going to think pivot point area is going to be right around in this area here, though. I'm going to stick with that 10510 for a low, low support. Your second one's going to be right here, right around 10691. And then that first one's going to be 10798, 108 even. Looks like it wants to go up another buck from there at 10909. That's where we are right now after hours. And we have the three resistances that are above this. You're willing to stop this chart at any time. But that pivot point and critical low support is going to be that 10510. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. And it should be a good play tomorrow. Should have some volume tomorrow. And just love the way the market recovered today from kind of the uh, rough week we've had last week and this week with that very sell-off on Monday and then that kind of recovery we had yesterday and then today we kind of got down again but it recovered fully and the market finished flat which I was very impressed with the Dow closed at 2245 in the red so the next one we're going to talk about and again I'll repeat these support these support levels that low support at 105 107 108 and then that 109 
That 10909 is the one we got to break up to the next three resistances. And the next stock we're going to talk about is going to be LYFT. Lift. Okay, so Lyft definitely gave us a lift today. Um, they did talk about that they lost 0 0.68 cents per share um, on 867 million in revenue, which they did beat analyst expectations. The company has really taken a big step towards profitability. I mean, they had some challenges, as you guys know. They had to pull some of their electric bikes out of circulation because they caught fire. The COO, John McNeil, departed at the end of July, which they did disclose in one of their filings. Uh, but, you know, their revenue was 867 million versus 809 million, which was expected. So the company stock has moved up as much as 13% after hours. Um, they actually did announce, though, um, the share lockups, which would expire on August 19, 2019, rather than a previously scheduled date in September. So that kind of like pulled back some of the gains that happened after hours. Um, the CFO, Brian Roberts, said he believed that peak losses for the company were last year. And based how well this quarter is going, he says the company may actually break even sooner than what they've predicted. And he's going to be updating later this year um, more information about the long-term guidance and break-even date. Um, they did say um, that they expect to reach revenue of $3.47 billion versus $3.5 billion, which was up from a previous range that was stated at $3.275. Um, the company also said that they expect to stem its losses in its first fiscal year on the public market, revising their guidance from the EBITDA, uh, which is great, from $1.15 billion down to $850 million. So, you know, they did report active riders on their platform. They had a total of $21.8 million versus $21.1 million, which is what the analysts forecasted. So... Uh, that's good to know and good congratulations to Lyft. Um, but we'll see now, you know, with this share lockup, I mean, I don't think the market's liking the reaction about that because that wasn't supposed to happen until September. And obviously they're doing it August 19. So Jim, what are we seeing here on the chart? Because right now after hours, I'm seeing $60 and 52 cent prints happening. Yeah, this, this Vegas and I weren't too thrilled about how they priced the IPO out on this trade when it, the IP open, opened up, and I mean, Vegas confidently said this thing would pull back to $50 from that 88.60 high, as you see right here, and it sure did. We had a real red IPO on this, and then here we gradually kind of built up and built a resistance level at 67.41. Now, we did have that pullback when the market was kind of red, like a lot of other stocks, and I've always said when the market's red, especially like the week we've had to look at some of your great tickers that you've been following and this is one of them this is not a great one to me but it definitely starting to look a little bit brighter and i do mean brighter we do have a low support down here and i'm going to call it right around the 57.33 on the on this three month four month chart with a resistance channel up here right around the 67.41 so i'm going to bring this to the 20 day right now and kind of digest it down a little bit have just one more look I see something right here I like to go ahead and draw a trend line right in there at 6360 so on this 20 day chart your pivot point area is going to be right around that 6188 area right in here I'm going to call that the pivot point there on the 20 day chart we are right now after hours at 6050 it did reach up to a high resistance up here, almost topped at 2020. Exactly. Look at that. See, you go back about three weeks on that, and you see at 68.33, and here we are at 68.30, it looks like after hours, maybe a little bit higher. So we're going to pull it up now. We've got the pivot point area at 61.85, 88, somewhere in there. I'm going to pull this to a daily one minute right now. You see how it bounced on up. That's a beautiful little bounce and a good little pullback on this trade. So we're going to keep that pivot point area right here at 61.83. You got some supports that are going to be below this. I don't think it can go any lower than that 57.33 at all. I mean, that's going to be a low, strong buy entry. Your second support is going to be right here, right around the 59.20. And then your first support is going to be here at 60.45. The resistance that we got to break at the pivot point area 
is going to be at 6183 and then you've got five other catalysts you can bring this up to on a 20 day chart and you can stop this video at any time while you're watching it and write these numbers down and they run up all the way from 6360 to 6830 now I would consider this not a stock you'd want to chase but you'd want to play the pullbacks on it and then look for the catalyst that it wants to start moving up pre or during the right during the open bell and that'll tell you if this stock's going to run up a little bit or if it's going to pull back to them support areas and that's LYFT remember it's just fresh out of from an IPO about four months ago the next one we're going to talk about is one of our favorites used to be my last name Perion Perry P-E-R-I -E so this is the Perion network so this is Israeli company also in New York um, this company I mean earnings is gone it's just fabulous job they had revenues of 63.6 .6 million and net income of 2.9 cash is up uh, also from 2.7 million increased to 21.3 so they've added their cash as well in the last six months so management has increased the guidance to 25 to 27 million so their net income has increased 194 percent year over year that's just insane mm -hmm. um so this company you know you know, you know they do the uh, digital branding they do uh, social media they do video displays i mean they're just doing so well they do a lot of digital advertising and branding so I mean, they're just doing really well. I mean, they're making a lot of their money, I think, from um, the advertising is doing really well for them, but also the search and the search ads is doing very well for them too. So, um, you know, they did mention that um, they're doing very well. The balance sheet's very strong and uh, they're benefiting from the evolving trends in the digital advertising sector. Um, they also did mention that they generated $22.4 million in cash from the operations which is up 28 percent i mean anytime you hear a company generating this cash i mean you want to pay attention to the stock especially the fact that this is below five bucks and just here after hours we're printing five bucks here so um you know i think the institutions are going to start paying attention to the stock um a lot more now that we're getting into the five dollar zone so uh keep a watch on this one definitely like it for a swing trade uh, definitely cash on hand. Uh, looks like here they have $42.1 million. Uh, cash provided in the second quarter was 8.4 compared to 2.9 last year. So looks really good here. Um, the guidance, again, like I said, was adjusted and they did increase the guidance to 25 to 27 million up from their original numbers of 24 to 26. So the market's liking it. And uh, Perion's delivering on all angles. So, Jim, let's hear about the chart because I know we traded this today because earnings is out of the way. People are in this from a swing trade perspective as well. I like it from a swing. I'm in the swing, and I like it so far. And uh, what can we see from Perion? Well, Miss Vegas did call a five dollar target on this, and we did hit that five dollars right after hours. Bam, bam. So that's a good job, Miss Vegas. We're going to pull up the yearly chart. As you know, we broke the yearly highs on this trade in the past month and a half. She broke a resistance level of 367, and here we are after hours at $5. So I'm going to go a little bit farther beyond that. We did have some three-year highs back here at 714, and that's where I'm going to get these resistances at. And we're going to kind of pull this up. Let's bring it to a 20-day first. You can see the resistance right here. You can stop this chart at any time and write them down that I've drawn on here. But I see a support level at right around 466, 468, somewhere in that 470. Could be a nice little place if it wants to pull back, which it could. And we have another support level right here at 490, 488. So let's split that up. Let's go ahead and go with that 489 for your first support. Your second one's going to be right down here, right around the 471 area. And that's going to be the double top breakout that we had today, right into close. About an hour, hour before the close is when we broke that 471 area. So we're going to pull this up now to a minute, daily minute. See if I missed anything in here. I see another support here at 480. 
So we got a low support, which was a pre-market high, right around the 469 to 471 area. Your second support is going to be at this 480, and that first one's right here at 489 with a resistance to break of $5. And we're going to pull that three-year up past that $5. We're going to magnify this. We've got 529, 564, and 590. So we still have some ways to go on this trade. And I do believe with the momentum and them great earnings that this can probably move up. So keep an eye on that pullback support and see if we can break some of these resistances past five. And that is Perry, P-E-R-I. The next one we're going to speak about is everybody should know this one, Match, M-T-C-H. And what a great run this had today. Um, what a great name for the company. I mean, I love the fact that it's called Match because they match people together. But I also like the fact that Match, I mean, in terms of a fire lighting a match under these shorts that we're trying to short this today was a mistake. I mean, the company did post their second quarter results. They did extremely well. Um, and I just really want to talk about how they definitely beat earnings per share. Uh, you know, they, their earnings per share of 43 cents, they beat by three cents. The revenue was 497.97 million. They beat that by 8.81 .8 million. I mean, that is just absolutely crazy. And, um, you know, I was a little hesitant. I'm like, you know, this company, I mean, I've always liked match. I remember last year, Jim, if you remember, we were trading this under 50 bucks. Yep, that's right. And I just can't believe the immense growth that this company has occurred. Now, for those of you that may not use Match, I mean, maybe you know people that use Match, but you know, this is, I want to tell you what the brands are. I mean, they include, this is called the Match Group. And obviously they have tons of dating products under their brand. They have them in all over the world and in over 40 languages to meet user demand. And they own, they own Tinder, they own Match.com, they own Plenty of Fish, they own Meetic. They own OK Cupid. They own Pears. They own um, Our Time, which is, I think, that one's more geared for retired people um, that are over 50. So there you have so many different brands under the match group. One. Okay, so one of the things that I really like, you know, aside from all these different brands they have, you know, they did talk about how they're taking concrete steps to e execute their global growth strategy. And what they're doing is they're investing in new brands and they're extending the existing brands. So what's happened is if they own, as you know, the company called Pairs, P-A-I-R-S, and this is now the market leader in Japan. And what's happening is that both Pairs and Tinder are outpacing the competition in Japan, which is just incredible. Um, what was amazing about that too, is that in Japan, they have a very interesting aging population, very low marriages, very low birth rates, which makes dating and relationship relationship products actually very critical. And, um, they have a lot of runway to actually develop the marketing strategy in Japan. Um, they also have a new digital product called pairs engage. And this product is going to leverage the technology that's going to serve the local matrimony market more than historically offline and in physical stores. So most people on um, don't really know how this works, but in Japan, they estimate that the matrimony market is about $0.5 billion. And they feel that with their product, they can capture a big share of that market which could actually disrupt the dating app industry. So I really believe that uh, for those of you that like longer term stocks, like I said, I was trading this last year around the 45s and I'm just amazed how the stock has gotten to this level and we could see this going to the 100 plus longer term. So definitely keep match on your watch list and, uh, you know, the dating game is still in business. I mean, people don't care. They don't want to meet people in bars and clubs. People don't even go to those places anymore, depending on your age. And they feel comfortable meeting someone online and then meeting them for a coffee or for lunch or whatever they feel like. But 
the research has also shown that even the people that meet someone that is a stranger, okay, it's no different than being introduced to someone from a friend. I mean, that person is just a mutual acquaintance, but I mean, you're still meeting a stranger, whether your friend introduces you or you meet them online. So that's what the data showed that people are not uncomfortable meeting someone online. And they said it's no different than a friend telling you about someone versus meeting them online. They feel that it's kind of the same result. Um, so good job on match to the match traders. We did trade the stock. We traded the options on this today. So congratulations to all of you that were long on this or if you're invested in match, really congrats on that one. Jim, I want to hear about match. Oh, yeah. Let's light it up. So we do have a support level here. It, this is a huge gap up today, and I think it's going to pull back, and I'll show you why I think it's going to pull back a little bit. But this stock was down here at 1232 three years ago, and then, and then right now we're up here at 9177. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart and let you look at the yearly. This is when we were talking about it before here, Vegas and I, and it did have a nice little pullback to $31, and ever since then she's ran up. She's ran up to almost a straight upward channel. And then she kind of consolidated and pulled back last week during that sell-off, and that had been a good time to get in this trade if you knew anything about the financials of it or if you were a little bit bullish on it. And today we had the big gap up from that low, and that low was right down here at 74.18. 74.18 and we had a $21 bounce on this thing today. Right now it's up $17.86 from the pullback of the high. So let's pull up the 20 day and have a 20 day look at it. You can see what I'm talking about, the big gap after hours where it run up and consolidated and then pulled back to this 82.48 and then we had the bounce up and I'll show you what I mean by this 82.48 when I called it on, called it out on a daily one minute chart. So here's your daily one minute. It did pull back, pulled out pretty nice. I'm going to pull back below the 200, kind of went down to that 82.48, and then it started reversing. I yelled it out to Miss Vegas. She jumped right on it, called the option out, and it ran all the way up for about a good couple hours to a high of 95.32, and then the rest of the day it kind of pulled back. It created a descending triangle. On the pullback, so I think this thing can pull back to at least 88.93, or if it doesn't, that if that does not hold, it'll be this 85.29. Now remember, this is a huge gap up, so it can find an equilibrium right around in this area, right down in here between 82.48 and 85.29 is going to be your low low support. Your first one and second one probably is going to be right around this 88.93 area. If that holds. And it can because that was the highs that we had last night. It can bounce up and start creating a little channel. If not, but I do think it's going to pull back a little bit by indications of this descending triangle right now. The 9 and the 34 has crossed downward below the 200 EMA, which is a negative response. And this is going to be match. The resistance highs we got to break is going to be that 95.32. And I'd like to see get up to a double top and create a small little channel in here so we can scalp this for the next couple of weeks. It did have a, a huge gap up, and so that's, that's the only reason I'm kind of cautious with it. And I see this descending pattern right here. Again, I'm going to call out the supports. 82.48 is going to be your low strong buy. You got your second one here at 85.29, and your first support is going to be here at 88.93. The pivot point. The resistance is going to be 91.32 up to all the way to 95.01 and I'll digest this out again tomorrow and we might bring it up one more time in the video just to see if my response was right. And that's match. And then the last one we're going to talk about is another one that had great earnings and that's going to be WW Weight Watchers. Yes, and you know what? This had the Oprah effect once again. And you know what? This stock... Is that really bargain prices, really? Because I remember this stock went from like seven dollar stock all the way up to what was the what was the year highs on this, Jim? Oh, Jim? Oh. At one time, this was in like I think the seventies plus. Oh, no, yeah, it was way up there. Um, it, yeah, the three year high was at one hundred five seventy three. Well, 
Oh, yes. I mean, look at that. I mean, I didn't remember. I don't remember it going that high, but I know that it was way up there. And I remember I had Weight Watcher stock back then, a couple of years back when, when Oprah joined or just before she joined. And I have regretted selling my shares. But, um, you know, like, I just can't believe how this has pulled back significantly from where it was. Uh, but you know what? They did announce great second quarter 2019 results they did raise the guidance uh the revenues came in at 369 million earnings per share of 78 cents they did raise the guidance from 155 to 170 and uh, they did have a good subscription base uh up 4.6 million subscribers um and they said it was as a result of their spring campaigns they said that the subscribers increased one and a half percent they said it's their highest level ever for a second quarter and that they're focused on building momentum and that they look forward to launching a new program innovation later this year one of the things weight watchers you know it's a very good program they have a really good app i think it's great i just can't believe they just keep changing the program and i guess they have to keep doing that to keep members engaged because people get really bored with counting points or you know, um, you know, counting freebies and things like that. So I guess they got to keep it engaging to accommodate the different kinds of um, health conscience people that are really, you know, on this plan. But you know what? I like the I've um, I've checked out one time their app and Weight Watchers app and you could scan things and it tells you how many points it's worth. I mean, it's it's pretty cool what they have, the technology. Um, I know people that have done Weight Watchers have done very well on it, have kept it off. And I guess the key really with their program is nice and slow, uh, but you will see results. And I think the key is obviously going to those meetings, this, which is really what you're paying for when you're joining the program. You're paying so that you can go to these meetings, which are, you know, kind of inspiring and you get to meet other people on the same journey as you. So I think Weight Watchers is on the right track again. Um, we see the stock is moving and uh, recovering back. Can it ever get back to even the $50 range? Uh, you know what? It has, it has the potential. I mean, it, it's at $30.15 at the moment, live trading hours right now. Um, but it has the potential to, to go back. Uh, I think the market's happy with the news of the earnings and the guidance. And uh, good job, Oprah and her team. But my goodness, what a drop this has had. Can you imagine being a shareholder back when it was in the $100 range and seeing it go to this level? I mean, hopefully those people, obviously, I think would have definitely sold off when it pulled back. But, you know, sometimes people just keep holding, thinking it's, you know, Oprah's involved. It's going to recover and look where it is now. So, I mean, I still think this is a deal. And Jim, let's hear about the chart and what you think about this price. Well, this is a stock I definitely did call wrong on the pullback. I thought, you know, when it was at 40 bucks, it was cheap. And the thing pulled back way under 20 and it just kind of shocked me. But you can see we got a head and shoulders pattern right here on the three year with a high of 105.73. And one side of it's totally green and the other side is totally red. But after these earnings, I think people are going to redigest this trade and look at it totally in a different view we do have another resistance i'm going to chop down right here and i'm looking at right around 3331 and another one right here right around 3189 so we're going to pull up the 20 day now or at least the one year you can see even on the one year how hard the sell-off was i called this back in spring thinking that we were going to have a good bounce on it and it just didn't go my way it actually kind of pulled back more to 1671 low and I'm still in shock about that. And then we had a nice little run up to about, and I started noticing this thing bouncing last month when when, the, when it started posting new highs and it ran all the way up to about $26, almost 27. And then she pulled back here for a month and then today we had that big gap up that broke that resistance level. I'm gonna pull up the 20 day now. As you can see, we had a 20-day high here of 27.12. That's what I was talking about when it was hitting off the scanners and we were scalping it and playing options on it. And then she's pulled back here in two, two and a half weeks and made a good strong buy down here. And I was mentioned it, mentioned it a few times in the room saying it was down here at 20 bucks again. 
And then after hours, she went ahead and ran up, and then she kept strong all day today and just kept on moving up, created a high of 30.42. So we're going to pull this low support right now is going to be at this high we had on the 20-day, which is at 27.12. And we don't want it to go any lower than that. If it does, it could probably come down here to 25.41 at a low support. And then I'm going to draw another little idea right here right around the 26 something and another one right here so let's go ahead and now remember keep that 2712 in mind no lower than that should be a strong buy for a dead cat bounce and we're going to pull this up to daily one minute there's that 2712 right there we have a low support down here and it can go down here you know this thing can sell off for couple of days and then come back in Monday and I'll be ready to trade again this is a huge gap up all the way down here from 2075 all the way up to 3042 so that's almost a ten dollar bounce in a matter of 24 hours so let's think about this real strongly here let's call a low support down here no lower than 2541 maybe down here even at 2487 pivot points gonna be right here probably your your second, maybe your third support is going to be at 2712. Oversold is going to be anything below that. That's where you want to keep your eye on it. And then your first support is going to be here at 2919. And the resistance that I called out today in the room, we broke past that. And then the next one was right up in here. Let's go ahead and put a little trend line there at 2986. But my next resistance I called was 3071. And we came close to it, we hit 3042. So that's what we got to break now is that 3042. And I'm going to pull this back up to a three month. I'm going to magnify this up. You can stop this video at any time. For right now, let's just stick with these two little targets right here at 3071 and 3189 for your next resistance levels. The pullback support is going to be right around that 2712 area and then that low support is going to be below that it's going to be a strong buy and that's going to be ww weight watchers and really i was very impressed with today i was telling the room if we can close just a little bit in the red just a little bit and we did close a little bit in the red on the dow at 2245 that was a perfect place i think tomorrow's going to be green and we're going to at least kind of have a flat day on friday and then come in here monday and hopefully we can have us a green week and that and kind of shake this off for the past two weeks and that's going to be ww right there miss vegas anything else you okay. want to close with no i just want to say that the day was a good day and uh you know we looked for different opportunities to trade on the stock level on the option level um you know kind of stayed away from some of these other common trades looked at you know really looked at earning winners i mean those those really help when you're trading stocks and you don't really need sometimes a lot of money to trade some of these mid cap large cap you know you can take sometimes even 50 shares 30 shares and still make very good money um especially on monster moves like on match today mcdonald's so, you did good on today too mcdonald's we did great on too i mean we did uh spot the breakout at over 215 today um and you know what we did call the option calls uh, i called the 220 dollars strike and those at the time were about 14 cents then mcdonald's pulled back and so they pulled back as cheap as eight cents and that's kind of where the majority of people got in around eight cents and nine cents which is obviously eight and nine dollar calls nine dollar contracts and these went all the way up to 35 cents each so people sold them around, I think, 30s, low 30s, like 30 cents, 32. They started getting out because we don't know how McDonald's can open tomorrow. I mean, I've seen this happen before where the stock moved beautifully. You're up two, 300 percent on your call. And, you know, you think, oh, it's going great. You know, I'm going to hold it until tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and the stock is down a few dollars. And then next thing you know, you just wiped out all your gains. So, I mean, McDonald's did beautifully. So if people did great. Congrats. I did share it on social media so if you followed you saw it and if you did if you traded it great job and that's it yeah and you know speaking of, of 
the Dow today. I pulled up a yearly chart on this, and we have that 20 EMA right there is where we bounced off today. And we've had a pretty good little sell-off, and a lot of them large cap stocks that have pulled back tremendously, well, those are the ones you need to look at if you're playing these options for reverses. But I think we're going to bounce up off this 200 and move on up higher and get back up to maybe a resistance level on the Dow, maybe right around the... I'd say 26,133 and then maybe get back up a little higher than that as as we try to top out again. So I'm not I'm not at all bearish on this market. I'm 100% bullish. This stock the market runs on algorithms and it just pulled back and we've had a good 5-day, 6-day pullback on this more than 5% and I'm willing to say and think we're going to start bouncing back up slowly but graciously and a lot of them big caps small caps that you're looking at put them create you a good little watch list and start playing some of these rebounds this is also one more thing I'd like to share if you follow us here on Twitter you can go to our website I love stocks.com hit this little Tweety bird right here and she'll bring you to our website hit that follow button and Miss Vegas post alerts in there we're also here on Stock Twits, which we, which we are not, yeah, Stock Twits, which we really like a lot, and I don't have it on here right now. Let me, there we go. We'll just hit that little S T right there, and that takes you to my channel. Hit that follow button, and also this S T will take you to Miss Vegas's channel. We also have Pentergeist in here, and if you ever want to watch our videos, you can go straight to that video button and hit our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And if you want to write us a little note, you also can do that right up there on that little envelope up there. So, Miss Vegas, you did some great calls today in the option land. And we called this market perfect when it was in the red down big and it started turning around. It was time to really get on it. So, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's dates, August the 7th, 2019. And we love stocks. Thank you.